All right, in this Regents Chemistry video, we're going to go through the January 2013 Regents exam. Uh, so I'm going to go through about uh, five questions at a time in each video uh, so that you can more easily navigate uh, through to see which questions you need help on. Uh, the exam itself and the answer key are both posted uh, on the same Regents Review tab on my website as these videos are. Uh, so you can kind of check your answers using the answer key and then see if you need any help with any of the questions. You can check out the video of that certain question or group of questions uh, to get clarification on the answer. So if we start with uh, questions one through five here, uh, the first one asks us what, which particles have approximately the same mass. So this goes back to the very beginning of the year when we talked about atomic structure uh, and we said that uh, neutrons and protons both have a mass of one unit uh, in terms of these mass units that we're, cons we're considering, one atomic mass unit. Uh, electrons, remember, have such a small mass compared to the neutrons and the protons that we can consider them negligible. So neutrons and protons both have a mass of one, electrons have a mass of zero. And if we look at some of these other particles here, it goes back to the unit on uh, nuclear chemistry. Uh, alpha particle, remember we said have a mass of 4 and a charge of 2, so we could label it as 4, 2 alpha particle here. And a beta particle had 0 for the mass. Uh, again, it doesn't actually have 0 mass, but in terms of atomic mass units, it's so negligible compared to a neutron and a proton that we say it has 0. Uh, negative 1 for the charge, and we could label this E or... Uh, use the beta symbol, either way works. Uh, so alpha particles and beta particles have a mass of 4 and 0 respectively, so these obviously don't have the same mass. Alpha particles and proton, again, 4 for the alpha and 1 for the proton. Neutrons and positrons, so positrons, remember, we said were basically the positive versions of electrons, so we could label it as 0, 1, E. Uh, so those obviously aren't going to have the same mass either. So a neutron and a proton both have a mass unit of one, and that's how you would come up with answer choice four here uh, for number one. All right, so if we look at number two, uh, which phrase describes an atom? So uh, we, again, talked about atomic structure at the beginning of the year. So uh, an atom, what we have is a bunch of protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and then they're surrounded by all of these electrons on the outside in this cloud. Uh, so basically, if we look at these descriptions, a positively charged nucleus. So the nucleus is going to be positively charged because it contains protons and neutrons. And protons are positively charged and neutrons are neutral. So a bunch of pluses plus zeros is going to give you something positive. It's impossible to have a negatively charged nucleus or even a zero charged nucleus. It has to be positive because it has to contain at least one proton. So the nucleus is going to be positively charged. We can take out 1 and 2, and then surrounded by negatively charged electrons here. So again, we said in the middle, protons and neutrons. On the outside, electrons. So that would agree with answer choice 4 here. So if we look at number 3, this is the definition of an orbital here. An orbital is where we have these electrons. So remember we have the nucleus with the protons and neutrons and this cloud of electrons on the outside. So these, this, this, we think of it as one large cloud but really it's separated into separate orbitals where these electrons are held. So uh, this is going to be again the most probable region of finding an electron. So you gotta know that orbitals are where electrons are held. Uh, if we look at number four, uh, the bright line spectrum of an element is produced as we do what? So this is when we looked at these energy diagrams, a little bit of a crooked energy diagram here, but uh, we said that n equals 1 might be here, and then n equals 2 might be here, and then n equals 3 might be a little higher up, and the spacing starts to get larger and larger as we go up here as the energy increases. So this would be n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. So uh, how we get uh, these bright line spectra is when we have uh, an electron in an excited state. So an excited state meaning it's higher than its ground state. So if we have an electron maybe that started at n, n equals 1 for its energy level and maybe it got excited up to n equals 3. So this is causing the electron to have a lot more energy and so how we get these bright line spectra is when this, en with, when this electron falls down from let's say energy level 3 back to energy level 1 it's releasing a whole bunch of energy when this happens, right? Because we gave it a bunch of energy when it got excited to level 3, and then when it 
came back down from level three to level one, it would have lost a whole bunch of energy. So that energy, when it gets released, uh, produces light, and that's the spectra that we see there. Uh, so this is again the movement of electrons, so we can take out choices one and two there, and it's electrons moving from higher energy states to lower energy states. When we're going from energy level one to three, uh, we're becoming excited, we're absorbing energy to do that, we're gaining energy. So when we see that light is when we release the energy, so that would be going from energy level three to one, or it could be four to one, or any higher level to a lower level, you're going to be releasing some energy there, and that's going to show as uh, some released light that you will be able to see. All right, and then if we look at number five here, uh, it says an atom of lithium seven has an equal number of what? So the key is we have to read these regions questions carefully. It says atom. So an atom means that something is neutral. If it wasn't neutral, it would be an ion. So an atom of lithium-7 being neutral has to have the same amount of positive charge and negative charge. So lithium-7, uh, the 7 here tells us the mass number. That's not particularly important. Uh, we can look at uh, the periodic table here and see uh, lithium over here has a mass of 7. Uh, but what we care about is the electrons and protons and neutrons here. So this mass number really doesn't have anything to do with it. So uh, because we said it's neutral, it's going to have the same amount of positive and negative charge. That means that the number of protons has to equal the number of electrons. So that would be answer choice two here. If we look again at the periodic table, lithium is atomic number three here. So what that means is it has three protons. And if it's a mass number of seven, that must mean three protons plus four neutrons would give us a total of seven for the mass. So we need four neutrons here. So therefore, the protons and neutrons are not the same number here. Uh, so again, the protons and electrons must be the same because it's an atom, which means that it's neutral. So uh, that's questions one through five. In the next video, we'll do questions six through 10. Thanks for watching.